um, today I'm going to discuss Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. Um, it's a standalone novel, one of his earlier works I think, although I'm not actually sure. The reason I think it's one of his earlier works is because it wasn't that good. Let's break that down a bit. Hmm. So, Warbreaker. A story of two sisters, princesses, obviously, trying to prevent a war. Preferably before it starts. Um, reason being, the war would be against their nation and they would almost certainly lose. So, obviously, best to stop it. And, you know, war, probably bad, generally. Um, the princesses, they were okay. I'd almost be inclined to skip over them as characters, um, not much very special about them. There were some interesting characters this, in this, though. Namely, Light Song. Light Song, <coughs> Light Song is a god. Probably. He doesn't think he's a god. But his head priest assures him that since a lot of people worship him, that makes him a god whether he thinks so or not. Some interesting philosophical and theological questions in it. I quite liked that side of it and liked some. Quite a funny guy. Good sense of humour. I like that in a god. So Light Song lives in the pantheon of the gods. There's a bunch of these gods. Maybe 25 of them or so. Going about their day, not doing very much. Looking at art. Not particularly sure what else their role is. And they're not either really. That is one of Light Song's gripes about his existence. He feels like, as gods go, he's not really achieving very much with his deification. But the gods do have a, quite a say in whether the nation goes to war or not. And that's kind of where Light Song comes into his own. Fairly strongly feels that war's a bad thing and is digging into uh, the mystery of why this war is happening. So he's, um, he's kind of on the same side as the sisters but none of them really know that. Back to the sisters a bit because they are the actual main characters and heroes of this book. The younger princess marries the God King and um, is kind of using her feminine wiles to try and uh, prevent this war at the same time as investigating the reasoning behind it in much the same way as Light Song but from a very different angle as the reader builds a much fuller picture quite good in some ways the older more responsible sister changes her character entirely throughout this book um, a little bit odd but she recognises the fact and kind of embraces it and it, it worked okay. Um, turns to guerrilla terrorism to try and uh, weaken the enemy's position. And she does this using a fairly complex magic system. I say that. This magic system is, is quite, for a standalone book, this magic system is, is quite detailed in its construction. It's all about breaths or souls. People can give or sell their souls and the rich or powerful can collect their souls. More souls they have, more magic they can do. Simple enough. And the magic they can do is to animate stuff, i.e. bring stuff to life. You want your curtain to strangle someone, give it some of your souls, have it strangle someone, take your souls back. And there were some action scenes where this sort of thing was going on, but not really enough of it. Um, Considering how much time the author spent building the magic system, I didn't feel like it was actually utilised enough, which was disappointing. In comparison to Mistborn, Brandon Sanderson's uh, masterpieces, thought the magic system in that also very well built and heavily utilised brilliantly. Loved it. This, not so much. Other than that, overall, I thought the plot was a bit slow. Had a magic system that could have been awesome, but was underutilised. And um, it all wrapped up a bit too neatly. Felt a bit forced. So, this is one of those books where I'm probably not going to recommend it. 
and by probably I mean I'm not going to recommend it. But while I'm here I will recommend Mistborn and the Stormlight Archives. Very good books from Brandon Sanderson. Warbreaker and for that matter Elantris not that good in this goblin's opinion. Bye!